ever walked in here. We've been excited. I said, it's like New Year's Eve. You think he'll be on top? No, I'm serious. Were we just no, saying we it's like New Year's Eve? We're all yeah. giggling and acting silly. Really? <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I'll whatever. In the That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> Thank Everyone's you. Everyone's volume good? People hear each sounds other? Sounds good to me. You, Mark, you, you sounds okay? good? Okay, Mark, can you talk to me a little bit? Wait testing, you? testing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 2, 1, 6. Perfect. Barbara? Today I'm excited to have my good friend, Mark Cuban. Oh, let's do it. Okay, good. Ready to go? Ah, we're live. He doesn't waste any time walking in, right? Good. Okay. Today I'm excited to have my good friend and fellow shark, billionaire Mark Cuban. i got to say that. I love the word billionaire. Not as much as I do. <laughs> oh, that's mean. I hate you already. But he's here with me at 88 Barber. And if you're alive, you know Mark. If you just started breathing, you know Mark. And so he doesn't need an introduction, as they say. But today we're talking not just to Mark Cuban, the guy we all know. We're talking to Mark Cuban, the man behind the money. That's who we want to get to know right. today. And how Mark spends his fortune, what he's like as a dad and a husband, although I've had a peek at that myself. And, of course, we'll end by getting out of him who his favorite shark is. And I better be the right answer. Of course. Okay. I've already told Kevin. <laughs> oh, not Kevin. No way. Okay, so I'm going to set you up on this stuff, okay? Okay. You started your first business, Microsolutions, after getting fired from a sales job. Right. At the computer store, and I know the story there if you want to uh -huh. care to repeat it. I think it's famous now. But why didn't you just go out and look for another job? Certainly you're capable of getting a good interview yeah. and getting another job. I just got fired too many times, left too many jobs, and realized I was a lousy employee. And recognizing that, knowing I wanted to start a business of my own at some point, you know, I had nothing to lose. I, I just lost my job. I was living six guys in a three-bedroom apartment, sleeping on the floor. My car was a piece of junk that literally, I've never told you the story how I got my car. So I had one car that was falling apart and we were driving down the road and you, there was a car that you could tell had been abandoned. And so I was like, oh, that's, it was a Trans Am. And I'm like, I think okay. I like where this is going. Yeah, and I was like, okay. And I forget exactly how it led to it, but um, we stopped, um, opened the door and I was like, this car is abandoned. You could just... And so I found some paperwork, like, you know, um, an envelope that was like a note from the bank, you're overdue and all that kind of stuff. So I called the bank and said, look, I can't get credit. I've, all my credit cards have been cut up and everything. But I found this card that, no that somebody had been. You are making this shit No, up. would you let me take over the payments? You're kidding. And they let me take over the payments. Just like that. Just like that, because otherwise they would have, you know, they would have lost the money on it. Oh, mm. my God. I yeah. don't think anybody would even think to do that. Right? Yeah, well, when you're when you're struggling and you're broke and you don't have a car that's going to last more than another 10 miles, I mean, you know, one of those beaters that you had to have oil in it. The car I drove to Dallas in had a hole in the floorboard, so literally I'd see, like, the white lines going underneath <laughs> my feet, and I had to stop for oil, you know, every 60 miles. It was awful. Not good for dating. Here's what I find fault in your story, which I don't quite get. You said you had nothing to lose, so you lose right. your job, you get fired, you've been fired a few times before. I get that. But I would think with uh, the situation where you were uh, living with your roommates, behind in your bills, needing a car, I would think it would be quite the contrary. I would think the first thing I would think of is let me get a decent job where I get some bucks under my belt until I could regroup and then maybe go out and well, start Well, here's why I did it. Because yeah. here's what led to my firing. Um, you know, I just closed a deal that was going to lead to a $1,500 commission. And I, what I, I was supposed to come in and open up the store, and I said, I'm making that executive decision to go out there and collect the check, thinking the guy's, my boss is going to love me when I bring back the check. You forgot you were an executive. At yeah, that exactly, yeah. right? And so he fired me. Um, but I knew I can sell, and I developed relationships with some people. So I went to a company called Architectural Lighting, and they wanted this time and billing software. And I said, look, I got no money, but if you front me the $500, and this, um, which is what I would sell it to you for in the car, I mean the car, the software cost me $250 to buy, you know, I'll make it work. And if it doesn't work, then I'll find some way to get your money back. I'll wash your car, sweep the floor, whatever. And they said yes. And so that kind of led to me going that direction. So I'm picturing this as a guy that walks into the store that you met in the store and the guy looked at you, a smart, savvy guy, and probably figured, this this kid's on the ball. This kid's, is that, that's who you approached? You met him at the store and found yeah. that as your first customers. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was an opportunity most people wouldn't cite. You grabbed it, ran up the flagpole and it turned out okay uh, very okay i would yeah. say way 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 beyond okay so what's it with you and these prizes you like to buy yourself <laughs> I, 
I, okay, I think it's a little strange, right? But obviously, you're rich enough to talk I'll about it and strange. justify it. Yeah. Okay, but you had uh, for your the very first business that you sold, Micro Solutions. You went out and you bought yourself, and you only sold. I should say only. I guess it's all relative. You yeah. sold it, I should say, for six million dollars. Yeah. The first thing you do is you run right out and you buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar ticket. So you could fly around the world first class. Okay, it wasn't a ticket, it was a lifetime pass. Oh, so anywhere you walk up to an airline, for the rest of my life. Yeah, for the rest of my life. Wow. Yeah, so we went out and got just torched, me and my friends. Um, kind of like you folks do. And anyway. They're not torched. Come on, they're all working hard. <laughs> they all work hard. And so um, we went to these, one of these old school steakhouses that had, you know how they had the phones, you know, where you just plug them in. on yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, I could barely talk. And, and they're like, what are you going to get? I'm like, I'm not into cars. I already have a place to live. Uh, you know, and I'd fly a lot. And I flew so much. I remember the American Airlines number. It was 1-800-433-6464, right? Oh, my God. And, and so I'm like, ah, oh, I call them, pick it up. And they're like, and I'm like, do you guys, and I'm stumbling, do you guys sell um, lifetime passes? What, you mean you never heard of a lifetime pass? You just thought, I want to set myself up for life. Yeah, yeah. And um, I called them, and they were like, yeah, let us put, let us put you to the, life, um, to the air pass department. And so I bought one. Wow. And it was me and anybody I wanted to take to go anywhere in the world on an American Airlines flight for the rest of my life. For two people? Yes. Do you mind if I ask you where that pass is now? Are you using um, it? Jason has it. Jason has it? So you can actually <laughs> give it to someone else to use? So I, you can give it to one person, but um, I'd given it to my dad. Um, but when my dad passed, then... Um, we were like, okay, you know, I'll give it to Jason because he works for me and flies a lot. Yeah, you have to picture Jason if you would. Jason could probably uh, do anything in his life he cares to do, I would say would be a fair description of yeah. Jason. But instead of doing everything in life that he might do, he hangs around and adores Mark Cuban. you got to see this young Jason and the way he looks at Mark. You'd swear <laughs> it was the love affair of a lifetime. It is. Yeah. Well, he got paid off. He got this ticket. Yep. And yep. I, I want to ask you, do you think he would take me with him wherever he's going? Does wherever it go anywhere good? Wherever you want All to right. go, boy. Now we're cooking. Well, you know what? I think I'll hold out. I think what I'm going to hold out is for what you did with your money when you went on to sell your new business or your second business. And what did you buy with that? You didn't just settle for a lifetime pass. It was that my fourth business. But yeah, it was. Um, I bought the Mavericks. No, no, before oh, the oh, Mavericks. Oh, before they the plane? The plane. Oh, the no, no, plane. not the plane. The jet. Yeah, the jet. Yeah, online. Yeah, so that was like, you know, to me... You know, one of the things my dad taught me, the one, most valuable asset you don't own is your time, right? And so, you know, I always wanted, my motivation in a lot of respects was to just retire. So my first company, I always wanted to retire by the time I was 35. I did it when I was 29. And then when I started back up again um, and really went back at it with Todd and, at Broadcast.com, then we sold that and it was like, okay, I can afford a plane. What's wow. cooler than that? And um, so... I decided, you know, you know, I'm an internet guy, so I got to practice what I preach, and so I bought it online, forty oh million God. dollars. Was that the first plane that was actually bought online? Yeah, first and only. It's the biggest purchase ever made online, ever to this day. And why the plane, and why such a big ass plane? It wasn't like you got yourself a little tiny jet. Well, it, there was a very specific reason, because I could. Wow. <laughs> That's power. No, really, though, just because you could, you thought you'd get enough seats to bring anybody you yeah, wanted. Yeah, I mean, because, okay, so I'll give you another story. When I was 16, my dad would get me these beater cars, right? Just the nastiest, ugliest $50 cars he could find. And back then, like a, a sporty car would be like a Mazda RX-7. Um, and he found this just old, nasty one. But he also found a station wagon. And I wanted the station wagon because I could take all my buddies to go play basketball. That's just, you know, that, that whole thing where... So big you, is better. Yeah, it's not even bigger is better. It's just like, okay, what, what can I have the most fun with? Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. did have fun because yeah. I met at your birthday party. I met so many of your friends that you grew up with. Yeah. And for me personally, that was by far the most enjoyable part of the party. Not how spectacular it was. Not even that Stevie Wonder was singing to you like, Stevie Wonder <laughs> as the and entertainment the tonight? Oh and my Juice God. Juice World. Did yeah. you know who Juice World was? No, I didn't really did you know. know. Chase, but the Chase kids Logan? told me. Oh, yeah. they did, okay. I learned before I left. Yeah, it was cool. As though Stevie Wonder wasn't enough. No, it was because, you know, I love Stevie Wonder. Um, but, yeah, I'm friends with the chain smokers, and Juice World was like, okay, let's do something a little different. Mm -hmm. you, um, I met one guy at the party, and I should uh, shame myself for not remembering his name, but he told me the story about you offering for him to go. He's uh, in the airline business now. I'm not going to give the punchline, okay? What's the name of that guy? Your childhood friend. Uh, he went to college with you. You or, or so he said. He said you offered him a share in your first company that you sold. He didn't trust it, and you punched him in the face. <laughs> That's <laughs> not true. Uh, Tim, 
high school buddy or college buddy? I think a college buddy. A tall guy. I thought he was a basketball player. Oh, oh, that's Eric. Yeah, that's Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Was that yeah. a true story? Yeah, yeah. When you we tell me met. that story because I heard his version and I totally believed every word. Yeah, ba just basically we're out drinking. You know, all these, these, these stories, you know. I heard all the stories yeah. that night. <laughs> and um, we just got into it about what I was doing. And he was a traditional TV guy mm -hmm. who really didn't believe it. He worked for Dish Network, I think, at the time. And it, we were just yucking up, like, you're, you're screwing up, you're screwing up, you're screwing up. And then, I don't remember the punch part, but yeah, I remember offering Well, to you him. know what he told me? He said, you said, and I want you to be part of my business. Yes, I'm going to make a million dollars, you said. I'm going to make a million dollars in this computer business. And he laughed in your face, you punched him and put him on the floor. <laughs> Is that true? No, okay, no. So, two different... No. Two different people. Yeah, two different people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, different story. All right. But that, that was the real punchline. It, it sounds like story. me. Yeah, it sounds like me either okay. way. Okay, you know what I said to this guy What'd when it was say? all through? Because he said he, he refused you twice. I said, well, you look like a happy guy. What do you do for a living? He said, I'm an airline steward. He didn't say own an airline. He said, I'm an airline steward. Oh, no, 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 no. That's Mark Stahl. third Stahl's. guy. No, that's oh Mark God. Stahl. Blonde hair. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that's Mark Stahl. No, Mark Stahl has more stories to tell than any human being. But are they being truthful? Um, he had a chance to work for me, and he was a flight attendant who um, just had a blast just flying. It was Southwest Airlines. And he still flies for Southwest Airlines. And likes it, by And way. likes it, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and um, you know... But he was fun because he, I would we would go places all the time. He and I went to the um, to the Olympics like on last minute. It's like Mark, let's go to the Olympics. It's like okay, let's go Olympics. Let's go to Moscow. Okay. But he didn't take the ticket that he should have taken. Yeah, he, you're right. He blew it. Business. Yeah, he blew, he blew it. it. But yeah. he wasn't bitter at all. No, no, because he has, yeah. he has fun. Yeah. yeah, he's a fun guy. And he said, "I love Mark. I love everything yeah. about him. He hasn't changed a bit." And that's the messaging I heard from every single one of your childhood, high school, college friends from that party, to your great credit. I never thought I would I would meet a billionaire when everybody said he hasn't changed one bit. I was an idiot then. and That's what they said. They said he's an idiot now. But why a basketball team? I'm a girl, so I don't get it. I would buy Saks Fifth Avenue, Bergdorf Goodman's, and have all the clothes in the world. I've just been a basketball junkie my entire life. I but mean, why a team? Just I think I'll get a team. You woke up one day and I think I'll get well, a team. Well, I was a fan, right? I lived in Dallas, um, and the team was horrible. Mm -hmm. And when it came up for sale, I was a season ticket holder, and... And, you know, everybody's like, oh, you got to buy it. You couldn't do any worse. You couldn't do any worse. And I was like, okay, you know, it sounds fun. Um, you know, I, once we sold to Yahoo and they, I wasn't going to stay around, it was like, okay, it sounds like something fun to do. And, you know, it turned out to be not just fun, but but worked out really well. And, like, to this day, when we have a home game, I'll go out there 3, 30, 4 o'clock before a game and just shoot buckets, you know, just shoot baskets on, on the court. And to me, that's, you know, that keeps me young. That's me being a kid for the rest of my life. And did you think you were going to do that and hold it for a long time, become a businessman who knows basketball? You thought, hey, this will fill in the blank between now and when No, I thought summer. I'd hold it for a long time. Yeah, you knew right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, for it was sure. more, more than a love affair. Yeah. Okay. How about your wife, Tiffany? I uh -huh. met her at the party. I had met her only one time before at the uh, Shark Tank set a number of years ago. Uh, she strikes me in personalities opposite to you. Yeah, we totally complement each other really yeah, well. Yeah, perfect. she's laid back. She's re really easy chilled, going, really easy going, calm. Yeah. But yeah, how does confidence. she deal with your notoriety? Um, we kind of just stick to where we go all the time. You know, we stick to our friends, and you know, we know if I go someplace like an award show, what's going to happen. If I go someplace different, what's going to happen. But, she goes you know, with you for those things or opts out. She's on not. That? Yeah, she's not big into that stuff. She's really all. big into your kids, though. Yeah, oh, big time. Oh, oh big yeah, time. yeah. And now that my kids are older, it's, it's a lot more fun to take them everywhere too. Mm -hmm. So I can take Jake, who's ten, or Alyssa will go with me. Still, she's thirteen. My sixteen-year-old doesn't know I exist anymore. Um, the minute she turned sixteen, I got really stupid. <laughs> but yeah, but it's still yeah. They're they're the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. And uh, why'd you wait so long to get married? I know you were a player. You played the field. You had the most gorgeous woman on your arms. Your whole entire life. Not really, no. Yes, that's true. No. I've seen photos. Yeah. I've met a few of these people who have shown me the photos. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, um, because I was so into business, mm -hmm. you know, I, I dated some women um, for an extended period of time and it, it multiple times it came down to, you know, me or your business and mm -hmm. I gave them the standard answer of, what was your name? Yeah, you know, just like that. Yeah, just like that because, you know, if you knew me, if you dated me, you knew me and you knew where my, my, my motivation, my focus was. And why was Tiffany able to settle in on that and say, that's okay, Because I we it. didn't get married until after I sold all the companies and everything. And so, but she had to believe you were going to jump out and do something else. Well, she knew I'd stay busy, right, and I'd, and I'd do things. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just, she was the right compliment to me. At the right time. At the right time, yeah. Okay. All right, let's talk money, and I'm not talking about money, and I hope you don't mind me asking, sure. but when I sold my business for $66 million to everyone I knew from my birth to that moment in time, everyone thought I was on easy street and I must be in a different universe. Yep. And like I had not a care in the world, like yeah. amazing. What does that feel like? Everybody said, what does it feel like? What does it feel like? And for me, it was so frightening. I just locked up my money for two years and didn't spend a dime. I yep. didn't go out and buy a plane or a ticket or anything. I should have, in hindsight. Uh, but what does it feel like not to be a millionaire? Millionaires have problems. They buy too big a house. They have a bad downturn in the market. They still have worries. But what does it feel like to be a billionaire? I don't even know how to, what's that, a million million or a thousand yeah, million? A million, a, a thousand million. A thousand million. What does it just feel like? You wake up in the morning, do you think, I can't believe it, I'm a billionaire. I think that all the time. <laughs> you do, really? Yeah. You wake up and you think that? Uh, all the time, not just wake up, but you just look around and just go, how the did this happen? Um, like you can't believe it? Like it was, po like, oh, write it off to partial luck? No, partial, partial luck for sure. Parsing. Yeah, all the above, right? No one gets to be this rich without a lot of luck. You know, it, it wasn't my plan that the internet stock market took off when it did. You know, Shaq gave me shit one time about, oh, you're lucky, you're lucky. I like Shaq. Did you plan to grow to be seven foot two? You know, well said, good yeah. Answer. You know, you you've got to recognize when you're lucky, and I was lucky. Now, you know, they say prep, luck is when preparation, um, opportunity meets preparation, mm -hmm. and so, no question, I busted my ass, and had I not worked as hard, it would not have happened. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be smart too, because you know, when we sold broadcast, Todd and I, um, we sold it for stock. And when we sold it, the stock was way up there and it went up even higher. And I was like, how much money do I need? I mean, I just don't need any more money. So I did something called a caller where I sold calls and bought puts, which protected me in case there was a downturn. Mm. Because I, I'd seen this, this game before where... Kind of like creating your insurance policy well, exactly. to make sure you, got, you stayed wealthy. Exactly yeah. right. And so I'd Smart. seen it before with, with companies when I traded a lot of stocks. Um, and so... You know, I hedged my, I hedged all of it, and when the internet stocks crashed, I still had all my money, and I even made a little bit, um, and that protected me. And they called it one of the top ten trades in the history of Wall Street. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't luck. That was planning. no, that was yeah, that was planning. Absolutely. Yeah, that was planning and not being greedy. Um, but you know, back to your question, if 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 it was crazy, I mean, it, it's still inconceivable, and it's just, you know, I just. Money, money buys you comfort. Money buys you um, sanity in some respects. Money um, takes away a lot of the stress of paying the bills mm -hmm. that, I've, that we've all been through at, at certain points. Um, but, but it doesn't make you happy. If, if you know, it's but like why not? You remove all that from the plate. Why wouldn't you be happy? What's left to be unhappy about? Well, yeah. I mean, look, I was happy when I was broke. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like I tell you know, people, whenever there's a big lottery jackpot of a billion dollars, people always call me and say, "Well, what would you know? What do you?" I'm like, if you if you were miserable when you were broke, money's not going to change that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were happy living your life when when you know you were living paycheck to paycheck, and all of a sudden you make it big. You know, if you're smart, you're going to love your life even more. And I think that's what happened to me. I just try not to take it for granted. I try to enjoy it. You know, I really, the biggest benefit of it, other than the, the lack of stress in terms of paying bills, is I can do things that buy me time. Mm. You know, I, I... Like, for example. Yeah, like the plane or, you know, people will... I can, I can make things happen more quickly by paying a little bit more. Mm -hmm. and, and that's important because time's the one asset you can't own, buy, or get back. I, I, you reminded me when you said uh, buy time. You bought some time for one of your friends. I don't know from which chapter of your life, but from one of your younger chapters. I met also at your party. I could write a book on Mark Cuban just based on the conversations, and I'm hoping they're all true. But this is a story this guy said. He said he was sick in a hospital outside of Dallas, some other city a long distance away. He was very sick and had some weird-ass disease that they couldn't put their finger on your own age, your own peer, and he said you heard about him. He never reached out to you, but you heard about him through someone, and you sent your jet to pick him up out of that hospital. He didn't know what was happening. Fly him to Dallas and put him in the best hospital with the best care, and he was cured. Is that a true story? I don't know. No! you got to back me up. Say, of course I yeah, remember. Yeah, of course it's true. No, you don't remember a I deed like it. that? Yeah, I don't. The guy credited you right there on the floor of your party. Oh, if he, he was there at the party, if he was there at the party, then it's probably true. But yeah, I don't, I don't I remember it. it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, oh, well, that it. made me fall in love with you all <laughs> over again. I don't remember. But if there was one thing, you wake up in the morning and you pinch yourself and you say, hey, hey, you know, I can't believe it. I can't, I'm a billionaire. What's the thought that you associate with that thought right after? A billionaire and, and, and what? How am I going to enjoy it? You know, and how, how does it impact my family? And how can I impact the world? You know, um, 
those are three vastly different things. Yeah. One's yeah. protective, one's giving, one's just about yourself. And what yeah. about your family? How do you protect them? How do you protect them from the notoriety? I think is a bigger issue than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's not even so much the notoriety because, you know, when people stop and ask for things or whatever, they kind of know just to wait a second and I'll deal with it. And I've just kind of explained to them it's I'm just going to be nice. And mm -hmm. if I'm nice, it goes by very quickly and everybody's mm -hmm. happy. So um, your kids don't mind standing by the sideline no. and you're you're being gracious to the fans. No, they're used they're to okay it. They're okay with that. Yeah, and I, I try to use it as a point. Look, if I can be nice to strangers, you can be nice to anybody, mm. you know, anybody that you deal with. And, you know, I, uh, I had this thing with my daughter not long ago where she made a comment I didn't appreciate to somebody else that I, I didn't think was right. And I had to go through the whole talk of, look, we're very fortunate, um, but you have to treat people with respect, period, end of story. Sorry. You know, my biggest fear for them is that they're going to end up being entitled jerks. Mm. And, you know, this is an example of potentially being an entitled jerk. Mm -hmm. Is that how you want to be? Is that how you want to be perceived, you know, in high school and college? And, you know, is that who do you want to be? And she got all upset. I got all upset. But, you know, that that's my biggest fear after their health. But you stopped it right then and there when you saw it. Yeah. You wouldn't tolerate it. No. Yeah. No, no. And how did they deal with being Mark Cuban's daughter, Mark Cuban's son? They must have that in their face all the time. Yeah, and they really don't talk to me about it. And really? I really don't ask them about it um, a whole lot because, mm -hmm. you know. And it, they have it in common with each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not like I want to say, hey, I'm famous. What do you think? How's it affecting you? <laughs> yeah, how's it affecting you? And, yeah, yeah. you know, and it comes up from various points of time. But I think my wife really has dealt with that better you know, in terms of dealing with the kids because yeah. she has to deal with it the same way. Also, I think the mom weighs in so much more on the kids no matter what the dad does. Yeah, I mean, I think particularly with my daughters, not maybe not as much with my son, even though he's a mama's boy at a certain level. But, um, yeah, I mean, we I get to spend time with all of them, and but they, they are... I, th I think there's certain things they get, like, I have to deal with the tough subjects, mm -hmm. you know, talking to my daughter about, you know, drinking and, you know, boys, and my mm -hmm. wife's like, you deal with that, and I think my wife deals with the school and the day-to-day -day stuff. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good partnership. Yeah, it is. At a bare minimum, right? Okay. So you invest in a lot of businesses. I see you on Shark Tank. Anything's good. I see you on Shark Tank, too. I see you on Shark yeah, Tank. Yeah, it's yes. amazing how that works. Yeah. yeah. But the businesses you invest in are across the board. I, yeah. I can't honestly say, well, what does Mark like best? I could do that with all the other sharks. I cannot say that. I would have to probably, if I was guessing, I would say, I think he likes the people best. That's about it. And I'm not sure I'm right on that. And I've sat yeah. next to you for, what, nine years now? Yeah, ten. You'd think I'd have the MO down. But what? What is it? So Shark Tank. You? So first, you have to ask, why do I do Shark Tank? You know, and I do Shark Tank to send a message that the American dream is alive and well, that you can be anywhere in the country and start a company and make it to the carpet in front of us and potentially get a deal or not even need to come and see us. And and so that's why I do the show, and, and that kind of drives what I invest in. Mm -hmm. And so where you know you guys might only do a deal because of the economic benefit. I might do a deal because of the social benefit as well. Mm. Um, or because I like the entrepreneur and, and you know, I want to help that person. So it's not charity, but I, because I think I can make, I'm arrogant enough to think I can make all those businesses work. Yes, yes. But um, I hear you don't. What's, no, no, of course they don't. <laughs> Yeah. I tell everybody, all mine are great. Yeah, of course, yeah. And then I hear you talk about, well, this one, my, yeah, no, you're the first one to say, this one was shit. Or yeah, this right. one, I'm never going to buy one of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, some of the entrepreneurs are just idiots. And, and you try your best, um, and sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't. Is there a telltale sign when you get involved in the deal? For those of people who don't know, you know, we make the deal on Shark Tank. It's a handshake deal. Then yep. we do the due diligence. Right. Let's say you go down the due diligence to the first week or two. Is there a telltale sign that you know, A, you're either going to be used by the entrepreneur or B, these people are never going to make you money? And then what's your out on that? Like, what do you say? Hey, forget it. Let's close this deal down. Well, they're lying about the numbers, obviously. A lot right of, away. But yeah. how about an honest mistake? A lot of the guys I work with make honest mistakes. Yeah, I mean, there's ones Well, you know, we didn't ask about the credit card debt. You know, mm. you know, it's a deal for um, $100,000 for 10%, million-dollar valuation. And, you know, you look at it, and then they have... 50000 in sales. Okay, I expected that. That's what you said. But there's $100,000 in credit card mm, debt. Pretty scary. Yeah, and it didn't it didn't come up at all. And it wasn't their fault that we didn't ask that question. It just didn't come up. It's like the, the sin of omission. Yeah. So you're out right away. You won't reconsider the No, I'll deal. still you consider it. I'll, yeah. But then I just reevaluate the business. Mm -hmm. You know, I really try to stick to the terms that, you know, you and I have done um, deals together. So we, mm -hmm. we both try to stick to the terms that, that we agree to. But, you know, 
but but what really for me are turnoffs when immediately they try to raise their salaries. Mm. You know, if they're trying to use that money immediately to put it Do in their pocket. You exclude that in your contract. I've always meant to ask you. Yeah. I kept thinking, you exclude it out of the contract. No, none of the money is used for salaries. Yeah, I mean, we try to back. say that, right? But some of yeah. them will still come back. Yeah. And there's things that will come back. So we try to be protective in the contract so that you can't just immediately raise money two days later. Um, you, you know, you can't immediately dilute us in other ways. And just, you know, and sometimes now, you know, because now the, the people that come on Shark Tank, they all talk to each other, mm -hmm. you know, so they know all the deals that have been done and all the legal issues and everything. And so if if all of a sudden they have a lawyer that's done 30 Shark Tank deals. They've re you really run into that? Yeah. Wow. I didn't yeah. know that. I've never run into that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I know they don't really want to deal, mm. you know, because they got a lawyer who typically didn't even Loves give a deal a deal. deal. And yeah. what about the guy that you feel like is using you? You sense it on the show or you don't, and then you're getting involved in the deal and you realize they're just using you. They don't want to close. Does that happen to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. How yeah. many times a year, would you say? Out of all the entrepreneurs. Um, like if I... You know, if I do 15, 16 deals in a year, you know, probably five or six. Yeah, well, I do a lot less deals than you because yeah. I have a hell of a lot less money. But I can tell you I get one a year. Yeah. And for us, it's a game here. We bet on them. I wonder if Which he's one? the guy, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. and for sure because... You know, you, you, you get the people that are there just for the commercial and they don't really want the deal yeah. or they want to be able to say, like I had two, at least two this year, where the deal didn't close and for little things that they introduced and they were out there doing all the media. Oh yeah, Mark's a great investor and this and that. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even talk to your ass, right? And, yeah, and yeah. so, yeah. You so that's get a red flag. You yeah, get out of that for thing, sure. Right? Okay. So I've known you for a long time and um, I would have to say, when people say, what's Mark Cuban like? The only people that people ask me about, I have to say, what's Kevin like? He comes yeah. before you because yep. everybody thinks he's a bastard. I'm sure right. you hear that too. The next question is, what's Mark Cuban like? And I just have the same old answer. I go, he has an entire zest for living, and what you see is what you get. I want to come up with something more exciting, but that's what comes <laughs> boring. out of my what mouth. I say? No, not boring at all, but that's all I can say. What you see is what you get, and he has such a zest for living. Well, Where does the zest that. for living come Probably from? Probably my dad. You know, my dad did upholstery on cars. Um, he was just, he's just a good guy, and he died last year at 92 and lived every minute like he was 21. You know, my dad was in his 70s, 80s, 90, you know, hitting 90 um, before he started to go downhill, and he was out drinking wine every <laughs> single night. I wish and, I married him. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, you know, his name was Nordy, um, old, old, old name. And I, I would hear it all the time. Yeah, I was out drinking with your dad. I was out drinking with your dad. I was out, my dad's 85 years old. I'm out drinking with my, your dad. You know, my dad, 87 years old, we're taking him to Vegas and he's sitting at the blackjack table just staring at every girl that walks by. I mean, he, he, <laughs> Was your mom okay with that? Yeah, my mom didn't care. I mean, it's like I told my wife, when I'm 92, I'm marrying a 29 year old, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I've seen you at parties, at bars, after Shark Tank, at different events. We're obligated to attend somehow. Yeah. And I have watched women flock to you like you're a piece of chocolate candy. Why don't they, I notice that? You notice <laughs> it, Mark. But here's what's wonderful. Let me clear my throat a second. Let me <coughs> clear my throat. I have a little cold, yeah. Hope you don't mind. Here's what is really amazing to me. I've watched them come like spiders attacking a prey, and you're the prey. I've watched them on a ballroom floor making their way to you, and you sit there and you just smile and rock with the music or something and totally ignore them. You're so loyal. It's like, no, 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 this guy's got to have a crack. There's got to be something wrong with this guy. He's Trust me, there's plenty around. of cracks in do... the system. But, but um... that's not one. How do you do that? And how do you not, as a powerful man, a rich man, a guy that every woman, good-looking, gorgeous, is hitting on, how do you resist? I think men should have separate marriage license. They're allowed to dabble. In case, if, they, if they've got all those qualifications, I really think that would be realistic. But how do you resist? Really. I, I, I don't see what you see, Barb. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm telling Maybe you, I don't, just don't talk know behind it. your back. Oh, you do? Uh, Take I guess. That. No, but let's say you don't even see that action. I'm telling you. I'm seeing it. It makes uh, Damon look like a piker in that field, and he's a <laughs> chick magnet, you know. But how do you resist? How do you resist the allure of being able to do whatever you want and have that kind of power to be who you want and whatever you want to grab? It's just not worth it. Yeah. Not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just not going to give up anything that is the consequence of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess this means, no, I don't have a chance with you, ever. You know, I, you know every marriage, there, there's always room for one exception where you agree with your spouse that you can have one exception. Mm -hmm. Is it really? Well, gee, let me talk to Bill. Can, can you wait here and go, <laughs> right? He can't hear. Yeah. So I'll just ask him, I'll pretend he agrees. He said yes. 
I actually started thinking that was a rule. And I was saying, I never heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so your dad. When I was at your party, I'm sorry to keep returning to it, I heard as many people uh, say that your dad was uh, the favorite guy in his neighborhood. Yeah, so always. So was that the sheer force of his personality, as yeah. you described? Yeah, he okay. just he's a great guy. No, no doubt. Now, what about your youth? What are you doing? Did you have a facelift? Everybody on the set last year was what? saying, "Yeah, everybody on the set last year behind your back was saying, Mark had a facelift, had an eyelid.'" No. Like, come on, come on, come on. No. Come clean with me. I'll let it out. I swear to God. No. The only thing I ever did, like three seasons ago, um, someone convinced me to try Botox, and it fucked up my smile big time. So mm. I can look at the pictures and and tell which season it was. So no. Yeah. No facelifts. I just walk around like this. Yeah. No so, facelift. But, what's the but I lost a lot of weight. You think that's yeah, really yeah, the thing? Yeah. yeah, that affects your face. Yeah, absolutely. And I went vegetarian too. I mean, literally, after I went vegetarian, people were like, "Oh, your skin's so much better." Um, but I'll, let me—I will say this. So back um, in my twenties, I dated a girl who worked for Neiman Marcus, and um, one second, I'm sorry. We'll get to Neiman Marcus. You don't want me to slobber on it? I uh, know it's more they will maintain the quality of the story. Back in um, my twenties. Back in my twenties, I dated a girl who worked for Neiman Marcus, who was always big on you wear sunglasses so you don't crinkle your eyes. Mm. And she gave me this moisturizer and she gave me these scrubs. Mm. And so I always started scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing my face. And if you saw my dad, I have good genetics. My dad at ninety two looked a lot younger. Um, and so I would always just take care of my skin. And then I started going to a dermatologist, you know, which real men generally don't don't do. do yeah. And so she would do the. Um, Oh, I call it pebbles, um, where they zap you with all these pebbles and all this stuff. Um, mm. Microdermabrasion. Yes, yes. Right, right. So I do that Makes stuff. Makes your face really red. Yeah, but you know, for two hours, mm -hmm. right? And wow. so, yeah, it's so, painful. And so I would do that, you know, once every few months, and so I, I've been doing that for a while, and mm. so it, it's helped. And then losing the weight, like, yeah, it, 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 I just needed to lose weight, so mm. going vegetarian really helped there, and you know, picking up my workouts. Do you think you're vain? Would you apply Absolutely. That? You do? Think oh, yeah. I, I see can, that. Yeah. yeah, I can't watch myself on Shark Tank. I literally have probably have missed a third or more of the episodes because I can't watch myself. Yeah. Well, I watch on Shark Tank. You look good. But guess what I do? On my side of the page, I cover the screen. I don't look at myself. Oh, I, know I hate I look it. Terrible. Oh, I see, that's it. the way I think about it. Yeah. Too. I think you look great. Yeah, well, I yeah. think you look great. We'll see. Why don't we chop, chop <laughs> the thing in half, right? Why not? What's with the T-shirts? Everybody always says, why does he always wear T-shirts? Why does Mark always wear T-shirts? Why wouldn't I? Well, why would you? I must what should I dress wear? up. Why Just, would I know, do that? Like, let me tell you. You could buy a really cool uh, cut shirt that really shows your physique, stretches across the chest, a little tight on the upper arms, the kind of shirts that make a guy really look like a hunk. Yeah. No, I just like to be comfortable. Yeah. So you I never mean, dress up for anything? Shark Tank's pretty much it. You don't go to church, synagogue, nothing. Don't bother to dress up. Unless, you know, I have a really good reason to know. And I think that's part of being a billionaire. Is that what it is? You don't have to that was that way dance. always. <laughs> always. Okay. And your t-shirts aren't even fashion shirts. They're kind of just whatever's in the closet. I mean, that's okay, but it's yeah. not designer by any. No, I don't even. Do I have? I don't know if I have any designer t-shirts. You don't. I used to buy Versace. It. Like, right after I sold my first company, I was like, Versace's cool. And I'd go down to Miami, <laughs> and I'd have these bizarro. There's a picture of me I'll show you with Mark, the guy's a flight attendant where <laughs> I've got nothing but a vest on and these Versace jeans and yeah, it was just. That was a phase when you were finding yourself. I think you found yourself now, I guess we're never gonna see anything other than a cheap t-shirt on you, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll wear the, the um, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I just won't wear a shirt at all. Maybe. If I get in good enough shape, that's what I'll do. Let me tell you what the sharks say behind your back that fascinates us because none of us are able to pull it out which is your ability uh, to answer a text the minute you get it. No emails, it, yeah, emails. How, emails, texts, phone calls. How is it that we don't hear from your assistant who's an assistant to an assistant and that you are on your game and right on everything? It sounds, it just strikes us like, this is the weirdest thing. I'll be but three days behind in text, for example, and thinking I'm pretty good because I'm keeping up. Yeah. But how do you do that? Do you just I'm the, only one, the I'm the only one who sees them. Yeah. And I, how do you do the quantity you get? Everybody wants to get at you. Like going back in my business career, it, it's always been easier for me just to do it than to explain to somebody what I want and then for them to go look at it, then them bring it to me and say, you know, do you want to take a look at this because you might be interested in this. 
you know, it's just easier for me because I've always done email. I mean, I have emails going back 25 years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's just like delete, 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 delete. You know, I can just read the first paragraph and know as opposed to somebody not knowing, sitting down, reviewing everything, explaining it to them, you know, trying to adjust and figure out what to do next. It's just easier for me to do it well, faster. I can, I can kind of get in a business deal because it's more effective, it's faster, and you know your best judgment is your own judgment. But I don't get it with all the stuff you do. I don't get why you don't have a barrier between you and the world. Why would I? Because it saves time. And I no, it's the exact know. opposite. No, I think it does save time in the number of hours in the day so far as people getting at you. Don't you want a barrier uh, between you and all the people who want to get no. at you? They're not all business deals. No. No. No, that's the fun part of life. Unbelievable. I think I'll be frightened to death if I did that for a day. No. It's, How it's about easy. all the kooks that get at you? That way makes it even more fun. Oh, my God. You're not shocked. <laughs> what we're finding out today is Mark Cuban is not who I always thought he was. He is a nut job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. These are not the right answers. So how do you <laughs> unplug, Mark? You're on the texting. You're on the email. You're constantly on, 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 on. How do you pull out the plug or is it not necessary? Is that a fallacy? Yeah, I don't need to unplug for the most part. I mean, I'll play with my kids, you know, you know, chase around my daughter, take them to school, pick them up, go play basketball, work out. Um, just the normal stuff, you know. Just a constant flow. So there's not a category for your family, a category for no. your work, anything like no, that. No, it's just you know, just try to do the right thing, try to connect um, with my family, and be available to them, do fun stuff with them. And I mean, look, you know, with the kids, the kids of my, my kids' ages, it's more about them than their parents, right? And, oh. and so it's more. I have to work harder to interject myself where I can, and you know, try to get their time, and you know kidnap them to go to lunch or my son's at 10 is still fun like you know we will go get a hotel room and the ice cream and tell fart jokes all night you know <laughs> for him to stay up until two in the morning right you know and, and do stupid stuff and so yeah but yeah with my 13 and 16 year old it's like everything's a one word answer so Alyssa how, how were tryouts because she has basketball tries okay what'd you do play basketball <laughs> did you make any shots it's basketball did you miss any shots we played basketball, Dad. What do you think? Get off my back. <laughs> You're not even. That's just her, you know? Whereas, and my 16-year-old daughter is more hyper, and everything's like a, more of an or ordeal. So, But she's like, I'm, I'm studying, Dad. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. And so, <laughs> why'd you wake me up? God dang it. You know, or she thinks she's cool, right? So she'll say frickin' all the time. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You let her get away with that? Yeah, I don't care, yeah. right? Or instead of giving me the finger, she'll give me a pinky, right? Oh. <laughs> you know, she's got her own little ways around it. And so, I, and I just laugh at it. But, um. Yeah, they're good kids, and so it's fun to spend as much time as I can. One thing I didn't see in the uh, the children that I met the night of your party is no arrogance. I didn't see an ounce of arrogance, and you can usually see that from across the room yeah. with kids, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, and I mean, they have no reason to be arrogant. I mean, they're good kids. They really, really are, and um, I'm proud of them. You think they're going to uh, uh, talk about you the way you talk about your father? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I you really think they're do. they're going to have that similar relationship? I think, you know, they're going to call me stupid and silly and goofy, mm -hmm. and they're right, you know? Um, but that's hopefully what makes it fun. Okay, so let me ask you just one last question, or maybe two, oh, two more last questions. I'm here for you, Barb, whatever you need. Okay. What are you working on now that no one knows about? You want to give me a secret so I can say, I know something about Mark that no one else knows, what he's working on right now. So I'm working on a lot of healthcare stuff. And um, back because when... you think that's a growing industry? You no, it's not even... You a lucky break, or what happened? No, right? more because I think what's happening with healthcare in this country is back ass half words that nothing we're doing really works as well as it should and it started when the republicans were looking to do a repeal and replace and get rid of obamacare which has its own problems but i just started saying okay if i was going to solve this as a business person how would i approach it mm -hmm. so i just started you know working with some economists and working with a lot of healthcare people both from the republicans and democrats side and so we're making some progress. There's so a lot of good doing, things. You're doing as pro bono work. It's not with an eye to investing. No, in no, I don't care if I make any money at all. Look, I don't. I stopped trying to just make as much money as I could a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I got enough money, right? It, it's more. I, I value my time a lot more than I do my next dollar. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about money, but uh, you know, I just want to, you know, try to look back at some point and say, okay, I didn't fuck it up. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is wrong with the healthcare system? Nobody seemed to have solved that at all, really. Yeah, Everybody's I mean, critical. the fundamental problem is not everybody can get the care they need at the cost they can afford. I think people understand that concept, but right. nobody seems to agree on how to skin that cat. Yeah, and I, there's a lot of ideologies, and I'm trying to, you know, balance the two together and bring them mm -hmm. together. But 
fundamentally we have to make people healthier. Mm -hmm. And to do, you know, if people are healthier, they consume less health care until they're older, right, and for long-term care. Um, and there, there's ways to approach that. There's ways to, the, the drug system is such a mess right now. Um, and so I started a company there because there's so many inefficiencies. People will start companies in the pharmacy industry, and then the big guys will just buy them out, and they'll just start companies knowing they're going to get bought out as opposed to trying to change the game. So we're starting companies that aren't looking to get bought, even though we've already had offers to, to sell the company. Um, well, and if then, you do it right, you're going to get bought. That's yeah, but I, I won't do it, right? Yeah, I won't, I won't sell it. I'd, I'd rather turn them upside down and disrupt the industry. Um, and then in terms of healthcare programs, um, I think there's a, you know, a, a modeling, I'm working with the RAND Corporation to model uh, a hybrid of single payer. So if you make up to, let's just say, $40,000, mm -hmm. your health care should be free. If you make between forty dollars um, to a million dollars a year, then you should pay some percentage of your income mm, um, in total. Fair. Yeah, and, also and that's saleable, whole, I would say. Yeah, and that's the whole point, right? So, you know, nobody, t the, the average person is going to pay 8% of their health care, 8% of their income for health care. Total, all in, no exceptions. But how are you going to, let's assume you come up with a premise that uh -huh. you really believe you can pull out, that right. it would really work, without being a politician, without having that power behind mm -hmm. you, uh, what are you going to do with it? So I've been, <laughs> I've been everywhere with it. I've been in front of Republican and Democratic senators, candidates, you name it, I, I've sat in front of them. And, to you know, make a suggestion no, in hopes that they say, take it on their own? Well, no, because they, everybody knows it's a problem. Yes. And, and the good news is I don't give money to any political candidate, so I can be independent. And so they know that there needs to be a solution. And, you know, they're, they're listening to me. So where I'm at right now is, you know, I've learned from everybody. I've taken input over the last two and a half years um, from everybody with a different opinion and put it together into a plan. And now it's getting modeled um, by a bunch of economists at the Rand Corporation, who's like the, the biggest and of best course. at Great doing this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, if the numbers come out the way I think they will, then I'll have, a, I'll have something to say. Look, here's what you think. Here's what the numbers say. Mm -hmm. Here's what, how you would approach it. Here's how I'd approach it. But it's it. still an option. You've got to get them to listen to you unless you run for That's my politics. job. Yeah, that's my job then. To get them to listen. you're not going to run for anything. No, I mean, the family really? voted it down. Really? Yeah. 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 You know, when I met Tiffany at your home, the first thing I said, is Mark going to run? And she said, no. And after that, everybody said, is Mark going to run? I said, no. No. <laughs> I believe Tiffany. Yeah, no, because <laughs> we had a family sure vote. You. Yeah, we have family vote. And they said no. Well, you, you dodged a bullet, as you like yeah. to say to me on the Shark Tank. Said, yes, dodged I did. Bullet. <laughs> you, you dodged a bullet when yeah. I get past one, right? Okay, back to Shark Tank. Good. What's, what's your complaint with Robert? I see you. <laughs> it's a truth. You're in your seat. When Robert does something, you're itchy. Oh, you're yeah, I'm rolling, rolling my eyes all the time. Face. What's oh. wrong with Robert? He's the nicest guy in the world. He is a nice guy. Yeah, I like Robert. He bugs you. What bugs yeah, you? Yeah, he annoys me. Robert. Um, Robert. Give me the list. It must be more than one thing. No, it's just, you know, everybody's got the type of person, really, you know, that annoys them. And just Robert screaming at the top of his lungs all the time. Wait, let me get hold of it back. Thank you. <laughs> I get this You're getting excited now. Yeah. <laughs> Robert screaming at the top of his Okay, wait, I'll do my Robert imitation. You want to get this? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'll do my Robert imitation. I was enjoying watching you do it. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I never sorry, thought of a picture of Robert screaming at the top. It's true. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're going to do it. That's I don't have to do it. You're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> amazing! Amazing! Oh my God, that's so amazing! Okay, well that's cute. What's wrong with that? It was cute the first 327 times. Oh God, you just can't tolerate it. Okay, what's wrong with Lori? She I seems like annoying. No, the Lori doesn't annoy, annoy me except when she's going out. Look, we all annoy. Yeah, noise. you're mumbling yeah. my ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so. Um, we're all long-winded at some level when we it's go out, true. right, because yep. that's the hardest part of the show is going out mm -hmm. and not sounding stupid. Explain um, that to people listening. Why is figuring out why you're going to go out, when you know why you want to go out, yeah. why is that the hardest part of show business on Shark Tank? Because you want to sound smart and you want to contribute something to the entrepreneur. You want them to know, you want to leave them with something of value that makes them a little bit smarter about their business. Mm -hmm. And you want to do it in a way that sounds like you care, and sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. And you know, you want to get you want to get it over with, mm -hmm. and um, that that literally 
if, the, if somebody walks on, I'm, I'm guessing you do the same thing, that I know there's just no chance that I'm going to do it. Absolutely. I'm you know already, when you're out right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm already thinking, okay, what am I going to say? Yeah, me too. That's yeah. why I take endless notes. They're all outs. Uh, no, I can't use that one. That's been used. Not that one. Not that used. But <laughs> yeah. it is so hard to come up with an out that hasn't been done 500 times before. So there's an old, old episode where the guy called me Cubes, right? And I, I said, remember yeah, that. Cubes, just for calling me Cubes, I'm out. Yeah. It wasn't because he called me Cubes. It was just an opportunity to go out. <laughs> I, I believed you. Yeah. Yeah, I just, thought, what's he bothered about cubes? No, it's I don't care. Deal. Everybody calls me cubes. I don't care, but I needed a way to go out. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my God. Who's your favorite shark? You. Be truthful. I know it. No, now I'm going to tell you. But, but I tell you all the time. Why do I tell you you're my favorite shark? Why, why? Do I t what do I tell you that you're really, really good at better than all the other sharks? Uh, I know exactly what it is, but I want everybody to hear it. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> no fool. Barbara's got the best people skills. Yeah. Yeah, she's her ability to recognize... Um, the good and bad in somebody and what they'll be like as an entrepreneur, what they'll be like as a person. Um, are they kind, compassionate, willing to work? Um, have they had their backs up against the wall? Barbara picks up on that stuff in a minute. It's funny enough, um, Mark Cuban, but I think you pick up on that better than I do. No, there's no way. I mean, because I look at the numbers, so I look you. at the business, and I try to drill down to see, okay. And then the arrogant part of me says, well, I can fix that. Mm, you know, whereas so. where you, in your case, you'll look, that's a character flaw. You see it all the time. Mm. You know, this, 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 but your character flaw is this, and I just don't trust that, so I can't do business with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why didn't I see that? Yeah, and so... Well, what do you think on the opposite side of the equation when you're excited about an entrepreneur or a business partner or a life partner? What do you think is the one thing that uh, you think makes a person a winner? And I hate these questions, one thing. I hate yeah, them myself. I know. But I, I'll rephrase it. What do you think is one of the most important things that you use as your measuring stick to say that person the winner, that person is worthwhile having them as a piece I mean, of my life, whatever piece that is? Are they learners? Are they workers? Um, will they admit they're wrong and adjust? You know, you've got to be very agile in business. You've got to be very adaptive in business. Um, it's not just all one way or the highway. And I think if somebody is willing to adjust, willing to work hard, and is always learning and always selling, then good things will happen. If I find on the flip side, if someone's always looking for an out, you know, mm. if only I raised more money, if only we marketed more, if only, you know, um, our advertising was better, if only I had the right person, if only this, if only that, and everything's an excuse, then it never works. Mm. And you consider that a character flaw. Yeah. It, it repeats itself again Yeah, again. Because, I mean, because I'm sure you see it too. Oh, it was the best idea, it was the best this, but we just didn't raise enough money. If only we had more money. Why didn't, you know, you knew that going in, mm. you know? If, if only I, I hired, a lot, lots of times someone will try to come up and say, well, well this isn't working. We need to hire the right person. Mm, all and, the time. And then they'll say, well, I think I, I've got the best marketing person in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if that person was so great as a marketing person, they weren't leaving where they were before because they mm -hmm. wouldn't let them go or they'd be doing their own thing. But they'll try to hire that one person that saves the company. And when you do that, that typically means it's over. Mm. And, you know, when I hear any of that, um, I don't really internalize Can I steal and your think water? about it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I drank one already. Yeah. Yeah. Leave a little bit for me. Okay. I want to say I got I got to drink out of the same bottle as you at some point. You got you know? my diseases? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, my reaction to that is always like a sunken feeling of hopelessness. I just, I don't know where that comes from. I feel hopeless about the business. I can't even quantify it. Yeah, when, when somebody yeah. just has an excuse for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you're going to hear the next one, the next one. Okay, so what about uh, the, the character flaw in a friendship or what turns you on about a friend? Why do you choose? Other than the old friends who are with you since I don't really pick, I haven't, I haven't gone looking for new friends. But people yeah. find you and you make yeah. friendships easily. Yeah. So what is it that attracts you to someone saying, yeah, I'll let them be my friend or forget it. They're I mean, there, there's running buddies and there's friends. Friend, you know, becoming a friend happens over years. Yes, you know, it it, it's not something that, oh, oh, oh we're besties, right? Mm -hmm. You're my new BFF. Yeah. You know, it, it takes time. Um, it, whereas running buddies, oh, yeah, let's go to the game. Let's let's go hang out and get a drink or let's all go out to dinner. You know, that those people come and go and it's, it's no big deal. How many close friends would you consider you have? Um, I mean, I have a lot of close friends, but... All old friends, by the way? Yeah, and, you know... From when I first moved to Dallas, they're still the same friends, um, people I've worked with, um, people I grew up with, people I went to college with. Um, I, I don't know. There's, you know, probably 15, 20. But, you know, I think the greatness of, of my friends is 
we don't have to talk every day, and if we don't see each other for a year or two, like we just did a boys trip um, that was we hadn't done in ten years, and we all got together and, and did stupid stuff in Vegas. Um, a little bit not as stupid as we used to do, but um, <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, but it was like we'd been doing it every year, yeah. you know. And so it's like it got together from last year. This yeah, time. exactly. And, and so they're all they'll always be my friends, and we'll always be close. But you know, you know, when, when, like you know, when you have a family, you have kids. That's your friendship. Those, oh, those are your friends, one. right? Mm -hmm. And so you don't have as much time. Like when when I was single, and it was like, what are we doing tonight? Mm -hmm. Do you have a hard time trusting all those people you cited? It was all prior to college or during college, old friends before you were a billionaire. Do you have a hard time trusting people's motivations? No, because I don't need anything from them. Well said. Wow. You know, it's not like, okay, you know, a lot of times with friendships, particularly when you're younger, it's like, all right, I need that emotional support. I want somebody in my life that's going to be there for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need that from anybody. So yeah. it's like, if you're my friend, you're my friend, and if not, Okay, That's whatever. Right yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mark Cuban, as usual, 150% Mark Cuban. Thanks, Bob. Thank you so much. That was fun. Really, thank you so much. <laughs> I love you there. But you'd have to replace him with somebody else, which would be hard because he's so goddamn loyal. Yeah, he's a good guy. Good guy. Oh, yeah. you got a great crew here. Yeah, everybody's good here. Come on. I don't hire anything about good people. I mean, I've got I've got a workout buddy. I've got I mean, every yeah. I kind of borrow all your people here. You know, when I come to New York. Yeah, yeah. That's shocking that you're working out with her. Dad's buddy. It, yeah. What's even more shocking is I never found out about it until I heard it from somebody from your camp. I'm like, Lila, you didn't tell me you've been hanging I out with your dad's body. We no, about more that. I didn't do too bad. What's that? I didn't do too bad. No, you were awesome. Yeah. She said yeah. you're in the back row. That's never a good sign. No, because I. They People knew the routine. Know. Like, I got yeah. there. They've been doing the routine for months. He jumped in on the last day. Yeah, and I, st I did okay. Oh, yeah. And then I went again another time, and, yeah. you know. Yeah, okay, well, that's not what she said, but okay, I'll believe it. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. She said you dash out right before the ending, which I thought, that's No, smart. I didn't. No, <laughs> but no, but the, the, the butt stuff, right the butt the stuff ending. destroyed me. <laughs> destroyed me. Like, that's one that. cheek was, like, ruined yeah. for a month. <laughs> but it's so joyful, isn't it? No. <laughs> no, that's a lot that part. The dance, the dance part is fun. Yeah, the dance, the dance part is fun, but the yeah. um, yeah. what? Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Well, stuff or whatever. It's like, it's like a bar workout kind of. Oh, oh my yeah. yes, that's yeah. Have you ever done this class? Yeah. No, never. She, she goes all the time. Though. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, we all the dance hear part it's great, was easy. but none of us are going. No. Yeah, the dance part was easy. I mean, that was fine, but the 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 bar part. Yeah, like sculpting. Yeah, yeah what, the sculpting. They work on your cheeks and everything. Yeah, your butt. And I, I just don't have the flexibility, yeah. right? You're like, it's like a dog peen, and yeah. you know, you're like, this way. Yeah, fire. fire. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You need the hip flexibility, right? Yeah, I don't have it either. Let me show you my uh, wall of shame.